Please stand. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening and the day is almost over. Be our light and scatter the darkness and hear our evening hymn of praise. Oh, where shall 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. Please be seated. Please extinguish your candles as well. Joy to the world, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, as for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. Far as my 
This one day of the year, no doubt, features the most people in church in any one day of the year, for good reason. But when Jesus was born, where were all the people? We're here because of him this night. Where was everybody then? The shepherds came, probably only a few of them. The wise men, they actually come a few weeks later. Where were the crowds for Jesus' birth? Bethlehem was crowded too, we know that. I guess nobody knew. But how could they not know? God had made it clear to his people for centuries, generation after generation after generation. But this is exactly what happens when you don't listen to God. You miss what God is doing. But God still not, he does not fail. Not a word that he speaks fails. From the very first word of Jesus there at that cursed tree. Throughout many centuries. We learn one thing first of all this evening as we look at the child in the manger. We can count on God. When everything else fails, when even we ourselves fail, God does not fail. Listen this to how he speaks of this glorious day. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet until he comes to whom it belongs, and the obedience of the nations is his. The Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old from ancient times.
What marvelous details God paints into the familiar account of Jesus' birth, doesn't he? How it happens in history. We, we all know history. We study the Roman Empire, right? We know about their aqueducts and their coins and their Circus Maximus and their, their gladiator fights in the Colosseum. But with all that stuff going on all over the world, the world just keeps going on. God with his divine fingers says, Here! And now. As we look at the child, we see God's divine intention in all of it. That nothing that He does for you and for your salvation in this child happens by accident.
amazing the first that find out that Jesus was born besides Mary and Joseph the shepherds they're so doing their thing that they do every day you would think king or princes or wealthy and well off would be first to know but then who delivered the message to the shepherds they were of such high estate only the angels could speak this message. Here's where human reason would like to insert itself and say, God, you should have done it a different way. Certainly a, a better way. Even my children have come into this world in a far, far better way. But God shows us that he is not subject to the will of man. What we see here is astounding. Just as his mother saying months before his birth. She sang about how the great mighty arm of God does powerful things, among which are to cast down rulers from their thrones and to bury the haughty, but with that same arm of destruction and judgment, he raises up the humble and extends his hand to feed the hungry. Not food for stomach, but food for soul. Who is there more lowly than those who know and who realize the dreadfulness of the sinful condition? How far fallen. Who is more hungry than those who know their soul can only be fed by the one who himself is the bread of life who gives his flesh to the world. To those that are humble and hungry like the shepherds, we receive the great news with joy that today our Savior is born.
When somebody does finally show up, they seem to get it. The Magi weren't there when he was born. They came perhaps weeks, months after Jesus was born. But we see them coming from another land, don't we? The God's word had been preached somewhere else too. And we know that Jesus is the Savior of all the nations. And if he's the Savior of all, then, well... That means he must be my Savior as well. God promised the light for the Gentiles, and light for those walking in darkness and the shadow of death. And he kept that promise here. But as we see the wise men worship and we come to adore with them, we look into the manger and see a child. A child who is fully God. And he deserves from us all obedience. But a God who has done nothing else than to come and to save us. To free us from our sins by his life and death. To free us from the punishment of eternal death by his glorious resurrection. We truly see what he has come to do. And for those who are wise today, we know that he continues to come as he has promised us. The word made flesh makes his dwelling among us. As we speak the forgiveness as he commands us, the wise see him in the waters of washing of rebirth and baptism. And the wise see him when he offers this flesh and blood together with bread and wine. And so when we worship as the wise men, we realize the eternal value of the gift that God sends us this night.
It's often said, it's so easy, a child can do it, which I respond, and why can't I? Think about it. The kids so sweetly told us the story of Jesus' birth. Something the angels delivered the night he was born. Just think about that. Angels. Children. But this is what God's people do. With hearts full of faith. And don't you dare think for a moment that you can't bear with you this same message of love, forgiveness, and heaven. If God would not give us the ability and the will to do it, he certainly would not have given us this command.
Please be seated. As our offering is gathered, please take the opportunity to find the little black booklet that's in your pew. Please fill out the information that's requested there. After the offering is gathered, the ushers will come with candles and light their candles again for the vigil portion of the service.
to save us and make us his children and heirs. Our Father in heaven has given his most precious treasure, his Son, to be born of the Blessed Virgin. Let us cast aside all fear then and come boldly to our loving Father's throne, praying in the Spirit for all mankind, for the Holy Church, and for our needs of body and soul. Almighty God, by the incarnation of your eternal Son, you revealed that you are love. Give us true faith in Christ and his promise, that by his conception, virgin birth, holy life, sacrificial death, and victorious resurrection, our sins are forgiven and we are yours. Increase our love for one another, for as you abide in us, we abide in you, and your love is perfected in us. Fill us with joy. Lead us to proclaim your glad tidings to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, by his birth in human flesh, your dear son took his place in the family of Mary and Joseph. Bless the families of our church and our country, that men and women would live faithfully as husbands and wives, loving and caring for their children and nurturing them in the grace of baptism and all the truth of your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, by your gracious provision, you created your church to be your family, where nurtured by your word and sacraments, all of us may find a home filled with sisters and brothers who care for us, love us, and increase our joy. Make of us a refuge for the weary, a family for the lonely, a safe place for those who are afraid, and a help to one another in all our burdens. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, guide and defend the President, Congress, and all who administer and judge our laws. Change the hearts of those who would lead us away from your justice and truth. Bless all who serve in the military, and especially for those forward this night, separated from spouse and children, family and friends. Comfort them and their families with the peace of your presence. Preserve in this land the freedom to serve you and lead us to be faithful citizens. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, in love, you declared us to be yours and promised to hear our prayers. Protect the police, firefighters, paramedics, nurses and doctors, and all, other whose, all others whose duty and service to us has called them away from their loved ones this night. Keep safe all who are traveling during this holiday time. Relieve the sufferings of your people and heal their diseases according to your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord Christ, in mercy, remember those who grieve the death of loved ones. Give comfort to any who mourn that they might find in this celebration of the nativity of our Lord hope in the midst of sorrow, knowing that you were born to die, to conquer death and give resurrection and eternal life to all believers in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. When all was still, and it was midnight, your eternal word, O Lord, descended from the Almighty throne to dwell among us. May we receive him in the peace of forgiven hearts and proclaim your gracious goodwill to all people on earth, for he is God with us. Emmanuel. 
and lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May he who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill us with such joy that comes with the knowledge of the forgiveness of sins and the hope of eternal life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.